All right, and now we move to the main event of the evening in the UFC's lightweight division. You have a fight that's been booked, I think, two other times, and Rafael couldn't get his, or I'm sorry, Fazib couldn't get his visa. There were some issues with visas. RDA, you know, had to pull out at one point, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but that could have been thinking about the Makachev fight, but you got... The Battle of the Hafaels and the number seven ranked former UFC lightweight champion and the current number seven ranked lightweight in Rafael Dos Anjos, who comes into the fight with a record of 31 victories and 13 defeats, going up against the number 10 ranked Rafael Adaman Fiziev, who comes back with a record of 11 victories and one defeat. So 31 and 13 versus 11 and one, number seven versus number 10. Whoever wins this fight is going to be on in the top five or just outside the top five, ranked at about sixth in the division. Um, this is a very, very good fight. And there's a reason that this fight got booked multiple times. Um, I believe the last time it was supposed to get booked was at UFC 272. And that's why Hanato Moicano filled in on short notice to fight RDA in that five round co-main event. And then obviously the main event was... Um, RD or uh, sorry, Colby Covington versus Jorge Masvidal. But in this fight, RDA versus Fazeev is a fantastic matchup, and the odds are a little bit crazy. They have Fazeev at like a minus two ten to like a plus one seventy five for RDA. That's a little bit crazy. I could see why because I know how much experience Fazeev has on the feet. His striking is unbelievable. His ability to roll with shots and come back on the counters. His speed. His ability to put his punches and kicks together. It's absolutely fantastic. You saw it's really showcased in the Mark Jacasey fight where he was able to pull back from the kicks of Jacasey, come back and counter with low kicks, counter with shots to the body. He's got a beautiful lead left switch kick to the body. Good left high kicks coming in right, straight right left hook or straight right left body kick, straight right left body kick. You know, he can time his combinations and put the kicks and punches together flawlessly. And he's very good at rolling and coming back with counters. He's very good at you know, slipping, coming back with a left hook, rolling, coming back with a right hook, a straight right, left hook, roll, left hook, straight right, right hand, straight left, double jab, right hand. You know, he he puts his combos together and he uses that upper trunk movement and head movement with his upper body to slip and come back on counters and then end his combinations with kicks. He's very, very good at ending his combinations and punctuating them with kicks to the body, low kicks, and then trying to throw kicks up top. RDA is a great striker as well. Southpaw looking to get that outside foot against Fazib. That's what he's going to be looking to do. He's looking to shoot that straight left down the middle, the right hook, the right hook to the body. He's very good with his body shots. You saw it showcased against uh, Robbie Lawler, I think, to the best of his ability. But you look back at the last fight against Hanato Moicano, he looked great. His straight left, his right hook, that left high kick was money. That left high kick was money for RDA. The left kick to the body, the left high kick. Every time he threw that left high kick, it came within inches of landing. And he was able to land that multiple times. He was able to take down Renato Moicano and control him on the ground, control from the top position, move positions from half guard to full mount to crucifix. You know, he was moving freely on the ground and getting those takedowns kind of whenever he wanted. And Renato Moicano might not be the best defensive wrestler, but he's not a bad wrestler and he's a great jujitsu artist. So to be able to do that to a guy the caliber with the caliber of jujitsu that Moicano has. It's very impressive. But Moicano did survive those five rounds, but it was kind of the one-way ticket RDA show. I think you can give one round to Moicano. Moicano was able to push forward, land that uppercut up the middle, really good right uppercut, straight right hand. Um, the one-twos down the center. The longer the fight went on, he was able to put his combinations together and get in the face of RDA. RDA loves to pressure you, but he doesn't love being pressured himself. Now, the thing is, a lot of the times when he's being pressured on his own, it's against a wrestler like a Kamaru Usman, like a Colby Covington. You know, those are the guys that are going to pressure RDA, push him back, get him up against the cage, get to the over-unders, take him down, work the pressure on the feet with the striking. RDA is going to be worried about the takedown, so he'll be open for the striking, and then he'll get taken down over and over again. He normally loses to very, very high-level grapplers and high-level wrestlers. Now... Rafael Fazib is not a high-level wrestler. He's not a high-level grappler, but he's got very good takedown defense. His takedown defense is sitting at a 95%. 95% takedown defense for Rafael Adaman Fiziev, I believe. Yeah, RDA comes back with a 58% takedown 
defense rate. Takedown accuracy, 50% on the side of Fazeev, but most of the time if he's going for takedowns, it's going to be off catching a kick and using those traditional tie sweeps. You know, sweeping your leg out, sweeping your foot out, foot sweeps, inside and outside leg trips. He's not going to shoot a traditional takedown. That's just not the guy that Adam and Fiziev is. And with the takedown accuracy on the side of RDA, it's at the 37%. And everybody's going to say RDA should use his grappling. RDA should use his wrestling. Yes, he should. It's a five-round fight. Get in the face of Fiziev. Close that distance. Land some combinations, land your kicks, but look to set up those takedowns. Look to push Fazeev up against the cage. Get him tired. Over under position, knees to the body in the clinch, elbows, knees to the body in the tie plum, elbows. Kind of like a Robbie Lawler. I feel like he has to fight this fight a little bit like the Robbie Lawler fight with just pushing him back and pressuring him, but he also has to use his wrestling, use his takedowns. Get Fazeev on the ground. Now, it's not easy to take Fazeev down, but we don't know what he looks like really off of his back. And I think if RDA gets that top position, lands his ground and pound from the half guard, the side control, is, is able to trans, transition on the ground, I think he can look at look to set up a submission like he did against Neil Magny with that arm triangle choke. I think that it's possible that RDA gets a submission here. And I think that RDA can strike on the feet, but honestly, I've heard a lot of people give RDA a ton of credit in terms of his striking, and he is a fantastic striker, but his defense is not great. He doesn't move his head that well. If the opponent comes back with counters, his head is usually on the center line to get hit, and if you hit him with two, three, four punches, he doesn't have the ability to kind of counter that great if you're able to land more than one shot at him. He's very good at countering off a of one strike. Maybe you throw one strike, he'll slip, come back with a counter, slip, go to the body. But if you're able to put two, three, four, five punch to punch combinations and kick combinations together, RDA has a hard time countering. And I think that's going to be the story with this fight against Fazeev. Fazeev is levels above RDA when it comes to the striking. Now, the takedowns, wrestling, and clinch attempts of an RDA can give Fazeev some trouble and make it a little bit more successful for RDA on the feet. Maybe he's able to close that distance. Maybe he gets Fazeev thinking about the takedowns. And then as he fakes the takedown, he comes with a left body kick, a right hook, a one-two down the middle. Beautiful straight left, beautiful left body kick. RDA is a fantastic striker, but he's not on the level of a Fazeev. And I think that people are giving him a little bit too much credit when it comes to being able to stand and bang with Fazeev. He's not going to be able to stand and bang with a guy like Rafael. It's just not going to happen. You look at the overall win percentages. 64% of the wins coming by way of KO or TKO with Rafael Fazeev, uh, and then 27% by decision, 9% by submission. RDA is a little bit more widespread. 16% of the wins coming by way of KO, TKO, 32% by submission, and then 52% by decision. This is a five-rounder. When it goes to the third, fourth, and fifth round, that's when RDA is going to be able to take over. He's going to want to drown Fazeev, use the grappling. Um, avoid a lot of the strikes on the feet, maybe not engage too much in the first two rounds and then pick up the pace in the third, fourth, and fifth. If it goes past the third round, I think that RDA can take him down. He can pressure him. He can get him down to the ground easily and work that top control, work that ground and pound, and just overwhelm him and probably finish him late in the fourth or the fifth. I do think that RDA in the third, fourth, and fifth is game. And if it goes into that position, that's when I think RDA takes over and starts to dominate. But those first two and a half rounds, that's when Fazeev's at his most dangerous, and that's when RDA's in the most trouble. Average fight time, 14 minutes and 37 seconds for RDA to 10 minutes and 29 seconds for Rafael Fazeev. You're looking at a 0.2 knockdown average per 15-minute fight for uh, RDA to a 0.24 knockdown average rate for Fazeev, so a little bit higher on the side of Fazeev. And considering how many more fights RDA has, um, I think that's definitely something you got to look at. Significant strikes, we'll look at the striking 3.62 significant strikes landed per minute for RDA to 5.35 for Rafael Fazeev. He's more uh, active with landing strikes on the feet, and he's also more accurate. A 46% significant strike accuracy rate for RDA to a 52% significant strike accuracy rate on the side of the number 10 ranked Rafael Fazeev. You look at strikes absorbed per minute, RDA is actually a little bit better defensively, which does surprise me. He sits at a 3.24 strikes absorbed per minute to 5.57 for uh, Rafael Fazeev. So he actually absorbs more strikes per minute than he, he dishes out on the feet. But his significant strike percentage is more accurate. But RDA's volume can be a problem for Fazeev if he's able to pressure him and get him, get him on his back foot for the right out the gate. Um, you look at defense overall, RDA actually has better defense, which is kind of surprising to me. 61% defense rate for RDA on the feet to 50% for Rafael Fazeev. Grappling is going to be on the side 
of uh, RDA with almost two takedowns per 15-minute fight at 1.99. Fazeev comes back with a 0.48 takedown accuracy rate per 15-minute fight or takedown average. 37% accuracy for RDA, 50% accuracy for Fazeev. I don't expect Fazeev to shoot takedowns, like I said, unless he's looking to use those inside and outside foot sweeps, leg trips, and looking to trip or catch a kick and take RDA down. 0.56 submission average for RDA to no submissions for Fazeev. Look, I'm going to be completely honest. After the third round, if you're live betting this situation, you might want to wait until the third round if it gets there, and then you unload on RDA. Because the third, fourth, and fifth, RDA takes over. No question in my mind. He's sitting at a plus 180 underdog to a minus 210 for Fazeev. Like, like I said, you know, it, 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 it surprises me a little bit, but it doesn't. Because I do think that in the first two rounds, the speed... The ability to move his trunk, his upper trunk movement, the right hand, left hook, left body kick, you know, pull back two, three, two, pull back two, three, two, double jab, right kick, jab, right kick to the body, one, two, right kick, two, lead body kick, two, lead body kick, one, two, pull back to avoid the shot, one, two, pull back to avoid the, the counter punch of RDA and come back with a left kick to the body. I think the speed and technique of our, of uh, Rafael Fazeev it's going to be a big problem for RDA in those first two rounds. Like I said, the longer it goes, the more RDA can grapple, get the, the lactic acid buildup in the muscles, take him down, push him against the cage. He's going to take over in the third, fourth, and the fifth. I think there's no question in my mind that RDA takes over in the third, fourth, and the fifth. But I know the stats say that his defense is very good, but against the striker, a striker, the level of a Rafael Fazeev, it's not going to be that great. I'm sorry. It's just not. And I know he was able to piece up Robbie Lawler, beat him up on the feet. I know he did well against Pettis, but we see how much Pettis has fallen off recently. He's never fought a striker the level of a Rafael Fazeev in his MMA career. And I'll stick by that. And I think the technique, the speed, the ability to put the combinations together with the hands and the kicks, it's going to be a big problem for RDA. He doesn't move his head that well. He has decent defense, but the, the longer the combinations are, the more likely you are to hit RDA and crack him on the chin. He has been finished. Eddie Alvarez finished him. Um, I think that might be the only time he ever got TK. I mean, he got knocked out by Jeremy Stevens back in the day, but Jeremy Stevens and Eddie Alvarez are two of the only guys to finish uh, RDA in his career. But honestly, I think that... Fazeev's going to add RDA to the highlight reel here. I think, like I said, he hasn't fought a striker the caliber of uh, Rafael Fazeev. Now Fazeev hasn't fought an MMA fighter the likes of Rafael Dos Anjos. It's a former champion. He's a veteran, you know, 31 and 13. But I think RDA is going to be a little bit too happy to stay in the pocket or stay at kicking range and, and you know, strike with Fazeev. And I think he can do it, but early on it's very dangerous. And I honestly expect... Uh, Fazeev to pull a shot of RDA, come back on the counter with the right hand, left hook, left hook, right hand, um, hurt him and put him out. You know, he, he beat Hanato Moicano in a five rounder. It was short notice, but he went five rounds with a guy on short notice. And even though he did dominate most of the fight, you know, Moicano landed some good shots. The longer the fight went, he landed, he put him on, he put him on the back foot. And the longer the combinations were that Moicano landed, the more that RDA kind of backed up and just, you know, succumbed to the pressure. And Fazeev came out there, and yes, he did get hit a couple times with some straight right hands, but man, that right hand left hook to the body, and then the left hook up top. The left hook to the body, right hand, boom, left hook up top. I mean, he put Moicano away in the first round, and at that point, that was a full training camp. I got to side with Rafael Fazeev. I got to side with uh, side with Ottoman here. I know RDA is a veteran. I know he's a former champ, but the striking at the level of a Fazeev, I just don't see him getting past it in those early rounds. I think it's going to be close the first round, but I think Fazeev's going to pick up on the timing. He's going to pull, come back with a counter, 2-3, two, 2-3, three, two, three, hook to the body, 2-3, lead body kick, 1-2, left hook, right hand, the 2-3-2. Two, two. I think he's going to catch him with a 2-3-2, two, two, stumble him, then go on the pressure, left hook to the body, right hand, you know, put on the pace and pressure, and then finish RDA. I think he's going to crumble him. I don't think it'll be a one-hitter quitter knockout. But I do think he hurts him, jumps on him, and gets a TKO. So my pick is the number 10-ranked Rafael Ataman Fiziev to defeat the number 7-ranked former lightweight champion in Rafael Dos Anjos via a second-round TKO victory. The striking is going to be too much for RDA early. But if you want to side with RDA in the betting, I would live bet it and just wait. I think that, yeah, maybe at a plus 180, a former champion is great, and you've seen... 
Fazeev, you know, wither in the third round against Bobby Green. You know, his cardio isn't the best, but early on, man, that striking is going to be a lot for RDA. And I know RDA is a great striker, but he's not going to be able to handle the speed, technique, and power of a Fazeev in those early rounds. And I think he catches him early and puts him out. RDA is hittable. He's not this unbelievably defensive fighter. He may defend the first shot, but the second, third, and fourth is what does the damage when it comes to RDA. He's not that good at defending multi-shot combinations. And I got to side with Adam on here. So my pick is the number 10 ranked Rafael Adaman Fiziev to defeat the number seven ranked Rafael Dos Anjos via second round TKO off a counter and then barraging him. All right, guys, that's going to be it for my picks for UFC Vegas 58. I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, and I always say, this podcast is available anywhere you get your audio podcasts. That includes Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Stitcher, Breaker, and many, many more. You can leave a review for my podcast on Apple Podcasts if you haven't yet. Please be sure to leave a review. Tell any of your friends who are fans of MMA and professional wrestling to check out the Touch Em Up podcast. You can listen to the audio version, or you can watch me on YouTube at the same name as the podcast, Touch Em Up Podcast. We're starting to make TikToks as well. I've made two TikToks in the last two days. They're sitting at over 15K views combined. I have a breakdown or a comparison to TJ Dillashaw and Robert Whitaker's cross high kick combo. And then I have a breakdown of Alex Pereira's knockout over Sean Strickland. Go ahead and follow me on TikTok. It's the same name as the podcast, baby. Touch Em Up Podcast. Same name on YouTube. Same name on any podcast platform you get. You can find the Touch Em Up Podcast. Thank you all for listening. I hope to be one of the biggest MMA podcasts in the world at some point. I'm your host, Double M, and I'm out. Have a good night, everybody. All right?